Hip rotation mobility is lacking in many and it often leads to knee and low back pain because these areas compensate for the lack of hip rotation. In this video, you're going to learn a unique exercise to improve hip rotation that also strengthens the gluteus minimus and medius muscles. Yo, what's up? Coach E here from Precision Movement, and today is another installment of New Movement Monday, where I'll be really breaking down one specific exercise that will improve your mobility and that will contribute to your movement longevity. So whether you've got pain or not, these exercises are good for everybody to at least try. And if you can do them, incorporate them into your routine, at least for a period of time, like three or four weeks, because they'll help you to wake up muscles that you haven't used in a while because they're new and novel movement patterns. So the first technique in new movement Monday was the reverse lunge to standing dead bug. And if you want to see that one, click on the information button. That's a, a great exercise as well. I use that one in every warm up that I do before working out. So today, what I've got for you is the 90 90 side bend. And this is going to work on hip rotation mobility, both internal and external rotation, as well as strengthening the hip abductors and the hip external rotators. Great technique. And it's really novel in the way that most, a lot of times when you work hip rotation, it's in an open chain fashion. Whereas with the 90-90 side bend, we're working it in a closed chain fashion. So it's a great dynamic mobility, integrated exercise that works patterns that you don't often work. Okay. So first up, we get into the 90-90 position. It's very popular nowadays. So 90-90 position, 90 degrees at the knees here, and we're flexed to 90 degree, 90 degrees of hip flexion. Okay. Back leg, same thing. We've got 90 degrees at the knee and we're flexed here to about 90 degrees. So we're working this rotation in hip flexion. And that's really beneficial because when you're at the bottom of the squat and you need stability, you get it from the deep rotator muscles of the hip. And this is what we're, we're working on here. So it's really beneficial for those types of positions. If you're playing hockey, you're in that skating stance, you got to move beneficial for that, any kind of athletic stance. So 90, 90 position, what you want to do is you want to turn kind of towards the back knee. Okay. So this hip is internally rotated. This hip is externally rotated. Turn towards the internally rotated hip. Get a, up as tall as you can. And the movement looks like this. Arms in front. Like so, okay? So it's a pure side bend and notice the pace very slow and under control. That's what you want to do because you want these muscles to be able to lengthen eccentrically under control, building that strength and building mobility and then control that concentric without losing your alignment or using momentum. So if you go too quick, it could look like this, like so, and then just kind of drop, you lose tension so that you don't have control over that full range. So you don't own that full range and your brain won't let you keep it for life. Okay. Here again, rotate towards the back knee arms in front. So we're going to work this side bend motion and then you're aiming to hit your shoulder to the inside of your front knee. coming up under control and they're returning to the seated 90, 90 position. Okay. Perform all your reps on one side and then go to the other side. So some mistakes or some other cues first, actually, before we get into the mistakes. So let me do it on the other side. So I got a, some muscular balance here. So again, turning towards the back knee. You want to think about driving through the knee, 
pushing through the shin, the thigh on the floor. So I'm pushing into the floor as I'm doing the movement. And that's gonna wake up those hip abductors and rotators, the glute medius, glute minimus. Those muscles are gonna fire up better when you do that cue. So I'm pushing into the floor and then I'm going shoulder to inside of knee. and up, and I'm still pushing through the floor here, okay? There you have it. Common mistakes that people make, not really mistakes with this, it's more about you don't have the requisite mobility or control to do it really nicely yet, yeah. That'll come, you gotta work on it, and by doing this movement, it's a dynamic movement, you're working strength, you're building strength, you're working the muscles, you're working through the full range, that mobility will come. You just gotta keep at it. So in terms of reps and sets and all that kind of stuff, three to five reps per side, two to three sets is good. Doing it two to three times a week. If you do that for four weeks, I guarantee you'll notice a significant difference from when you started, the, you first tried this movement to the end of that little program there. Okay, so. Give that a shot. Now, if you have trouble just waking up the correct muscles, you're not feeling the glutes when you push your knee into the floor, or you can't even get into a good 99 position because especially with this back leg, the TFL is gonna cramp up like crazy if you don't have the mobility and the, the flexibility to get into this position, then I suggest you check out hip control because this builds you up from the ground up. This I consider more of a functional integration exercise. It's in phase three. This type of thing is in phase three of hip control. Whereas in phase one, we do more open chain, isolated single joint movements that are simpler to perform at first, especially if you've got some muscular amnesia going on and that will serve as the foundation for progressing to a movement like this. So check it out. And if you go through the course, I promise you'll feel a lot better and you'll develop a new relationship with how you use your hips, whether that's in everyday life, in the gym, or sport. So go ahead and see what it's all about by clicking on the link right here.